That's part of our heritage is to remember that Christ is our friend and he is our companion throughout life. Christ is our savior. There's no other. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful once again for this opportunity to prepare for Holy Communion. Father, we want to be faithful to obeying your commands, to take communion, to show indeed that we are in fellowship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, as we listen to the message today, strengthen each one. We pray, Lord, that we will not forsake the assembly, but that we will continue to grow in your grace and in your knowledge and to make a difference in the lives of those in our families and in our communities around us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer and bless the message that I am about to share. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, today is what's known as Worldwide Communion Sunday. It was begun by the Presbyterian Church in the mid-1930s, late 1930s, and this legacy of celebrating in unity with other believers throughout the global community continues to this day. And certainly there are, uh, are many Moravians throughout the world that are celebrating Worldwide Communion Sunday together. With, with each one of us. But just think, on this special day, each one of us are in communion not only with Christ, but we are in fellowship with believers throughout the world from every culture, language, community of faith, Non-Moravians are taking opportunity to come to the supper table today. What a special event. Together, we affirm. When we take the bread and take the cup, we affirm that Christ is the head of his church. The inclusive nature of the Moravian Church, the Anchorage Moravian Church for that matter, any Moravian Church that stands on its rich heritage of openness to other believers should give us even more reason to celebrate today. I believe every Moravian Church in Alaska should be celebrating our unity with believers from different faith groups, different denominations. We are in unity with other congregations. Because, why? Because as Moravians, we believe and we confess the unity of the church given in one, in one Lord Jesus Christ as God and Savior he died that he might unite the scattered children of God. And as a living Lord and shepherd, he is leading the flock towards such unity. Where in the world did Pastor Nicholson get those words from? The Moravian ground of the unity, our own doctoral statement, the only one that we have stresses that God is leading, that Christ as the living Lord and Shepherd is leading his flock towards unity. Again, according to the Moravian ground of the unity, I don't think I'm, I'm stretching the understanding. Indeed, we are in unity with other believers throughout the world. For the ground of the unity, our own doctrinal 
doctrinal statement says these words, it is the Lord's will that Christendom should give evidence of and seek unity in Him with zeal and with love. In our own midst, we see how such unity has been promised us and laid upon us as a charge. This is the doctrinal statement again. We recognize that through the grace of Christ, the different churches have received many gifts. It is our desire that we may learn from each other and rejoice together in the riches of the love of Christ and the manifold manifold wisdom of God and statement from the Moravian ground of the unity. As believers in the Anchorage Moravian Church, I think members what makes each one of us so unique, so special, is that we can celebrate with other believers throughout the world, other, other Moravians. In many respects, when we worship on Sunday night in a more contemporary service, we celebrate our oneness there, oneness with other believers. And it is there that so often we share our gifts, we share our testimonies, we share our gifts of praise and worship together. In fact, I had a call from uh, a man in Fairbanks who just arrived, and many of you know him. His name is Evangelist Gary Simple, my friend, from another church, in, uh, actually from Minto originally, Minto, Alaska. And he didn't say the words, but he is willing to celebrate unity tonight, oneness in the Lord. And he'll be here to share uh, his uh, uh, music with us and his big gift of praise. Today, let's remember as we prepare to take communion that we indeed are part of the whole body of believers. It's just not us, not just us here today. Christians celebrate in so many different ways through the different liturgies, through the different types of churches that are around the world, cathedral churches. I believe a, a, a family, a couple from the Anchorage Moravian Church, members of our church, just arrived back from uh, Frankfurt, Germany last week. And last Sunday they were worshiping in a beautiful, old, I saw the picture on Facebook, a picture of an old, old cathedral in Frankfurt. Certainly, uh, they were able to go in. I trust that they felt welcome in that place. For those of us who are gathered here today, uh, we're going to celebrate it in our own way. If you've, never, if you've never seen how Moravians celebrate communion, we do it different. In most churches, you have to come up to the front. But for Moravians throughout the world, the pastor, the acolyte, whoever serves the cup, the, the bread and the cup will come to you. And you will signify your intention of receiving Holy Communion by standing. Think about this imagery that uh, we love to gather around the table, don't we? Every last Sunday of, of each month, we gather downstairs for the community potluck. We love to gather in the homes around Anchorage and Wasilla and Palmer and other communities. We love to gather with our families, our friends. But today, we come to gather around the Lord's table. I know that we're not able to enter into your homes, not all homes, to partake, but in the church, anyone can come to partake. We come to God's table. No matter what 
we have done. Or what we've neglected to do. I believe this, that God always reserves a place for us at his table. Why? Because God loves us. And he forgives us all of our sins if we are truly sorry for them and confess them to God then we can take our place at the table God's table now we look here in, in front of the sanctuary took pains to make sure we had a straight table that's colored, covered with white clean linen and this is the communion table. It's a very special symbol there. Every believer is invited to come and to partake of the bread and the juice. I invite you to come. We invite you to come. Because we practice what's called an open communion. Regardless of what church you may come from, as long as your relationship with Christ is good and your sins are confessed, you are invited. No matter what, God has a place for all of us at his table. And this morning, we celebrate that together with the entire world. Christians are celebrating we celebrate too. And there is lots of room around God's table for every single one of us. And when you think about it, that's a pretty big table. When you, th when you think of all the believers around the world. I'm glad that you're here. So let's celebrate as we partake of the bread and the cup. And let's celebrate our unity and, 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 and the faithfulness of our God who loves us so much that he forgives all of our sins. The Lord, the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen.